Hello students. In the previous few videos, I've spent some time to go over ions, including monoatomic and polyatomic ions. And I've introduced you to 34 polyatomic ions, and I've also covered how to name the monoatomic cations, including the variably charged metal cations that require a Roman numeral in their name. Now, as I've said before, the number one most important skill in nomenclature is to be able to recognize which category a compound belongs to. A, is it an acid? B, is it ionic? Or C, is it covalent? Because once you decide which category the species belongs to, you can apply the appropriate rule set for that category. For the second category, the B, ionic compounds, it is important to be able to recognize ions in a formula. That's what's going to tell you if you have an ionic compound. So, being able to name an ionic compound requires you to be able to recognize the ions that are in the formula. For example, there may be more than one monoatomic ion in a compound, and you have to recognize that you have more than one monoatomic ion, for example, in this case right here. And we can tell that we have more than one monoatomic ion there because of the subscript. Now, how do we know that these two compounds are ionic? Well, you may recall that the way that we recognize an ionic compound is that it either has a metal or ammonium, NH4, in this first position. So if you see a sodium, that's a metal. This is therefore an ionic compound. Calcium, that's a metal. Therefore, this is an ionic compound. So when we look at this ionic compound, we have to recognize that what we are seeing there, even though the charges are not explicitly drawn, we are seeing a sodium cation and a bromide ion. Remember monoatomic anions? Take the IDE ending. So that is a bromide anion. And we can also see how the charges balance. You may recall that in ionic compounds that do not overall have a charge on them, the charges from the cations and the charges from the anions must balance. So the plus one from the sodium and the minus one from the bromide cancel each other out. They balance each other out. Over here, we see a, a metal in the initial position, and we know that that is a calcium cation. So what we have there is a calcium two plus, and we are recognizing it because we know that this is an ionic compound. So this must be the ion of calcium. And then we have to look at the anion. Now, a lot of students make the mistake here of thinking that this is a Br2 anion, and they will write this. But this is not correct. Br2, the 2 minus charge, is not the ion that is there. That subscript 2 just means that we have two of these. So, in fact, we have a bromide and another bromide. So that two right there does not mean that we have a polyatomic ion, a dibromide ion. In fact, we have two bromides. And you can see how the charges are balancing. Now to extend this into polyatomic ions, we don't want to confuse when we have one or more polyatomic ions in a formula. In this case, we only had monoatomic bromide and we had two of them. So here's an example with some polyatomic ions. We have the sodium in the first position, so this is an ionic compound, and we're dealing with the sodium ion. And what is left? It's a BRO, so that BRO must be this ion. And we know that that is the hypobromite ion from our previous study. If you recall this chart of 12, that is bromate, bromite, hypobromite, and that's the hypobromite anion. So this is sodium hypobromite. Over here we have calcium, we have the calcium ion again, and now we have parentheses around that hypobromite and a 2 subscript. And that two subscript applies to everything that is in the parentheses. 
which means that we have two hypobromites. So we have one and we have another. So a calcium ion is joining two hypobromite ions and you can see how the charges balance. This is the only time that we use parentheses. The only time that we use parentheses is when we have more than one polyatomic ion. So notice I do not put parentheses around the hypobromite ion over here because I'm not trying to multiply it by some number. I only have one of them there. So indeed it would be incorrect to draw parentheses in this formula. So again I only use parentheses when I have a polyatomic ion and a subscript right after it that says I have more than one of them. I'd like to show you a couple of uh, potentially confusing ionic compounds that involve two ions that look alike. One is the azide ion, which is one of our fundamental 16 polyatomic ions, and the other is the nitride ion. So just to help you recall, the azide ion is a polyatomic ion that has three nitrogens and that cluster of three nitrogens has a single negative charge. And we are comparing that to the nitride ion, IDE ending, which has a single nitrogen that has gained three electrons and therefore is now a three minus charge. So you can see these formulas look an awful lot alike, don't they? And this is an excellent example of why it is so critical to have your subscripts and superscripts clearly designated so that they are not ambiguous. Because having the subscript 3 versus having the superscript 3 completely changes which species we're talking about. Azide and nitride. but it is potentially even more confusing when these ions appear in an ionic compound. So here are some examples. NaN3. Well, is this A an acid? No. Is it B ionic? Yes, because we have a sodium here. So what are the ions? There's a single sodium ion. So there's the sodium ion. And then the remainder must be an ion that is charge balancing with that single positive charge. So we know right away that that N3 does not mean that I've got three nitrides. It means that I've got the azide ion because I only need one charge to charge balance this sodium. Okay? So with that in mind, and with this sort of pattern that I've given you here, I would like for you to take a moment and see if you can do the exact same thing I've done up here for these three remaining compounds. Basically, I'm asking you to write the ions as separate ions. And if there's more than one of them, write them more than once, the way I have up here and up here. So if, you, if there's more than one sodium ion, Write the, write the sodium ion, and then another sodium ion, and then another sodium ion. So what we're doing here is we are training you to see an ionic compound and recognize the specific individual ions that make up that compound. So go ahead and pause the video now and do that for these three remaining compounds. And when you're done, resume the video and I'll work through those. All right, coming back to this, we have, th this is an ionic compound because they have sodium. These are all ionic compounds we can see because they have metal in their first positions. Here I have three sodiums, so no, that is not a polyatomic ion. I don't have a trisodium ion. Instead, I have three sodiums. So I have a sodium, a sodium, and a sodium. And what is the anion? Well, it is a single nitrogen that somehow has a charge that will charge balance with these three positives. So it must be the nitride ion, right? So I have a nitride ion. Looking at this next one, I have a single calcium. 
And now I have two ions here that appear to be polyatomic ions because I have parentheses around them. And each of those ions is an N3. If I have two ions that charge balance with this two positive charge, then each of these ions, these polyatomic ions, must have a minus one so that when I have two of them, then I'm bringing two negatives to offset the calcium's two positives. So I think you can see that what I have is two of the azide ions. So I've got an N3 with a minus and another N3 with a minus. The last one's a little bit more tricky. Here I have three calciums. And they are bringing six positives into the formula. So if I look at the anion, I must be bringing six negatives to offset those six positives, right? Looks like I have two of these nitrogens. And these nitrogens thus must therefore be nitride ions, right? So two of them would give me the six minus to offset the six positive. So I have a nitride and another nitride. So in this calcium nitride compound, for every formula unit, I have three calcium ions and two nitride ions, and they charge balance with six positives and six negatives. One last comment I'll make about this is a reminder that when we are naming these compounds, we never use Greek prefixes to try to tell the reader how many ions there are. So I would never try to tell the reader that there are three sodiums in this compound. There are three sodiums, but I would never say that explicitly. I am leaving it up to my reader or my listener to be able to do the math because they know what the charge is on a sodium ion, they know what the charge is on a nitride ion, and therefore they can do the math in their head to figure out I must have three sodiums to that one nitride. So I mention this because a lot of students I see making the mistake of saying, well, I need to somehow tell the reader that there are three sodiums here, so I'll call this a trisodium. No, we do not do that. We don't call this a trisodium. We don't call that a tricalcium. We leave it unspoken and we expect the reader to be able to do the math. The only time that we explicitly tell the reader a number is when the cation is variably charged and we have to tell them the charge on that cation, otherwise they can't do the math in their head. So, never name an ionic compound differently to try to indicate the number of ions that are present. The Greek prefixes and the Roman numerals do not tell you how many ions you have. Instead, the number of ions will be obvious if you just give the names of the ions.